In the realm of anime, main characters get power-ups more often than I get laid, and while it happens a lot, there are various ways they can achieve them. There are normal ones like seeing his good friend die, unlocking blonde hair, and clapping the bald-headed racist alien out of misery. There are also freaky ones like eating a hero's hair, or even mingling some melons for the MCs to get their power-ups. However, talking about some juicy melons, there is one MC who gains his power-up by doing something that involves milky jugs. And that is Alexander from the Quasar of Stigmata, who has to slurp the sweet nectar out of those milky melons to get his power-up, making us ask questions on who let the writers cook. Alexander is a weak loser who is so ugly. His parents tossed him into a concentration camp that trains people to get abilities from sucking milk bags. For some time, he lived a peaceful life under the care of a hot chick whose melons are bigger than Sunaid's, but his blissful life ends when members of the adept gang attack his camp and eliminate his caregiver. After, he moves to a small town, enrolls in Mykhailov Academy, and makes up his mind to score a ton of babes so he can get stronger from sucking their chest fluids and get revenge on the adepts. On this day, when Tomo and Mafuyu arrive in class, they meet a dead plant on Tomo's desk, causing Mafuyu to lose her head. Just then, Hana starts provoking Mafuyu, stating they assumed Tomo had been eliminated since she hasn't been at school for a while, and when the class rep tries standing up to her, she shuts her up. To get on Mafuya's nerves, Hannah states that her uncle may be the culprit of the recent abduction of girls in their town in Mafuyu, immediately jumps her while Tomo holds her back. Seeing this, Miyuri decides to add fuel to the fire, reminding Mafuyu that she'll be in a world of pain if she hits Hana, as she is the daughter of the former headmaster. This triggers Mafuyu, so she lashes out at Miyuri, who makes Mafuyu look like the bad guy and as she runs off, Tomo reminds Mafuyu of what their father told them about God, saving those who smile to calm her down. Later that day, while the girls are heading home, Mafuyu suggests she prepare a feast to celebrate Tomo's return to school, which excites Tomo, and as she hurriedly heads home, her two left feet trip her, causing her to suffocate a goth version of Kilua with her chest weapons. As they check if he's alright, he suddenly starts giving Tomo a sensational massage and treats her melons like ice cream. After Mafuyu knocks him out, they take him back to their place, and as Tomo cleans him up, she states that he looks identical to a picture at their church, but Mafuyu tells her not to compare him with their god. Taking a closer look at him, the girls can't seem to figure out his gender. So Tomo suggests they check if he has a rod to confirm. What? But before they can do so, he pulls a Batman exit on them. As Mafuyu heads out to search for him, she spots their town's church on fire, which worries her. So she rushes there to save her uncle's painting, only to meet a cultured weirdo there, who suddenly attacks her and eventually pins her to the wall. Just then, the weirdo confesses to eliminating the missing girls, displaying their bodies like art pieces, which scares Mafuyu, and she suddenly starts creating a scene from Fifty Shades of Grey with Mafuyu, while mocking her for turning into Tomo's mother without taking care of herself. After this, she throws a version of Chidori at her, and Mafuyu realizes the weirdo wants to burn down the church. As she throws his second wave of attack at Mafuyu, Goth Kilwith suddenly shows up to save her, and the weirdo identifies him as the martyr Alexander known as a stigmatic, which worries her. However, she sees he is too weak to fight and attacks him, but Teresa suddenly shows up, blocking all of her attacks. Just then, she pulls out her mommy milkers to feed Alexander, which shocks Mafuyu, and after getting a power-up from her body fluids, he becomes a C4 bomb. While he preps to end the creep, Teresa explains his power to Mafuyu, stating that he is a quasar who can control specific elements from the power boost they get from sucking chesticles. Soon after, he easily cuts through the weirdo, erasing her from existence. And afterward, when Mafuyu thanks him for saving her, he scolds her for her inability to defend herself before walking off. The following day, Mafuyu returns to the church in search of Teresa, only to meet the father there instead, so she asks him what a quasar is, but he refuses to tell her. Later in school, the homeroom teacher presents Alexander to the class as a new transfer student, and while the girls simp over him, Mafuyu's brain hits the pause button in shock. During lunchtime, Mafuyu confronts Alexander about the previous evening, but he tells her to piss off, which annoys her. Just then, Miri joins in the conversation. Acting chummy with Alexander, however, he scolds her for using his nickname, which triggers her, causing her to lash out at him. While walking away, his culture instincts take over as he can't resist massaging Tomo's huge melons while she makes so sounds, and after having a fun time, he warns the girls to stay away from him while walking off. The next day, after Mafuyu wakes up from a wet dream, she sees Tomo using her chest balloon as a pacifier, causing her to yell at her. So Tomo decides to milk herself, and as Mafuyu tries stopping her, she realizes Tomo is having a fever. While Tomo rests at home, Mafuyu heads to school where she meets Alexander, and she demands he explain what the hell is going on so she can protect Tomo. In response, he says that a group of psychos are after an icon known as the Theotokos. As Mafuyu starts her pity party about being 
dragged into the mess. He shuts her up as her smooth brain can't understand the situation. Just then he passes out and later wakes up to find himself buried in Tomo's chest pillows, looking like a Disney princess, which startles him. After introducing herself to him, she starts putting the moves on him. However, their alone time is cut short as Mafuyu and her four-eyed friend interrupt them, bringing him dinner. At first, he refuses the meal, thinking it'll taste as bad as Mafuyu looks, but later folds when Tomo offers to feed him. And after having a taste, he immediately becomes addicted to it. After filling up his guts, he gives them a free pass to use his nickname, since they were kind to him. And while Mafuyu teases him with this, Teresa arrives to pick him up. While they talk, Teresa tells Mafuyu to be on her guard and then leaves with Alexander later that night. While in the bath, Mafuyu fantasizes about Alexander going ham on Teresa, but she snaps back to reality when the girls start gossiping about Alexander and Teresa. And afterward, Mafuyu sends Tomo to bed, while her four-eyed friend becomes an interrogator, wanting to know what has been happening with her. Mafuyu then reveals everything that happened to her, and her friend further asks if she knew the location of the icon the psychos were after, which makes Mafuyu sus of her. Suddenly, the masked creep shows up and uses Ayana as a kite, causing Mafuyu to panic. She immediately chases after them and meets the creep making Ayana less clothed, threatening to amputate her chest buttons if Mafuyu doesn't rat out the location of the icon. Seeing how scared Ayana is, Mafuyu agrees to reveal its location to make the creep lower her guard, and she immediately launches a sneak attack on her, only to find out that Tomo is the creep, which leaves her frozen in shock. However, Tomo tells her not to act so surprised, as she always felt like a pet to Mafuyu. And after giving her villain speech, she asks for the icon's whereabouts for the last time, holding Ayano's milk factories hostage. Suddenly, Teresa and Alexander show up, and Alexander states that he can see through Tomo's weak disguise, then charges at her like a ballistic missile, while Mafuyu tries to stop him. To her surprise, she discovers that Ayana is the mastermind pulling the strings from the very start, so Ayana decides to drop her victim act, taking Tomo hostage while attempting to get into Mafuyu's head. To end the fight, Alexander gets some power juice from Teresa's double Ds and Ayana decides to do the same with Tomo, only to discover that Tomo possesses premium Soma that gives more power. As Alexander tries to save Tomo, Ayana threatens to turn her into mincemeat and proceeds to create an adult movie with her, causing Tomo to make love sounds. Determined to save Tomo, Alexander launches successive attacks at Ayana, but she easily blocks them, and before she can turn Tomo to barbecue, Alexander puts off the flames and then creates an extra hole in her body which surprises her. After this, while sitting that stronger psychos will come after them, Ayana becomes a human bonfire, and as Alexander hands Tomo to Mafuyu, he suddenly hears a voice from the flames which he identifies as the Quasar of Gold, who tells him that he won't see a moment of peace before disappearing. Some days later when Alexander wakes up screaming from a nightmare, the girls rush to check on him and Tomo tries to make him relax by hypnotizing him with her huge jugs. <laughs> yeah, boy. However, he asks if Tomo is okay, as the Soma taken from her body should put some strain on her. But she replies that her puppies are doing just fine, which makes him relieved. Trying to get some attention, Mafuyu accuses Alexander of having a melon fetish, but he roasts her as he says he isn't interested in her chest pimples. <laughs> He then explains to Tomo that Soma is a power boost that comes from life, and as she worries that her lifespan may have been cut short, he replies that she should not worry about it before telling him a scram, which triggers Mafuyo. As she nags him, he shuts her up by pointing out that she is still in her only fan uniform, causing her to run off in shame. Later in school, everyone is surprised by how big-brained Alexander is, even when he puts in zero effort and later on, while Mafuyu scolds him for his nonchalant behavior, Miuri butts into their conversation, inviting him to live with her instead of the girls. Irritated by her kiss vibes, he turns down her request, stating that he'd pick Stakura over her, which stuns her. Afterward, while Miyuri is annoyed by his city boy attitude towards her, Hannah decides to get at Mafuyu, accusing her of being linked to Ayana's disappearance from school to make Mafuyu feel bad, while Miyuri backs her up. Seeing Mafuyu being ganged up on, Alexander turns into her knight in shining armor, stating that he'll reveal what happened. Then, suddenly treats Miyuri's cannons like stress balls, commenting that they weren't as soft as Tomo's before walking off, which makes Miyuri mad. Later that night, the girls show Alexander at his room in the house, and afterward, the girls decide to take a bath together. While having some girl talk in the bath, Tomo asks Mafuyu if she would like to clap Alexander as she acts like a dummy whenever he's around causing her to almost drown, and Mafuyu brushes her question off, saying he already has a thing for Teresa. As they get out of the bath, Alexander gives in to his urges to peek at them, not losing his cool even when the girls freak out, and after figuring out their cup sizes, he casually walks off. After this, they head to his room for more fun, only to find it empty, which worries Tomo as she thinks he has bolted again. During this time, Alaskander is busy rocking Teresa's world, making her scream his name as she goes into Cloud 9, 
while the girls enjoy the show in hiding. Seeing this gets Tomo in the mood as she starts touching Mafuyu, which blows their cover, and as they get caught, Mafuyu picks a fight with Alexander, scolding him for sneaking out of the house, but he can't be bothered, so he decides to head home. The following day, Mayuri and Hannah head to the port to welcome Kure, who appears to be a harmless cute girl, and after getting to know each other, they decide to take her shopping. While picking out her clothes, Mayuri leaves Hannah alone with Kure, and as she asks Hannah to help her change, she suddenly collapses. This makes the cultured creep excited, but before she can make a move on her, Kure exposes her as the degenerate that she is, summoning her blow-up doll to capture her, and orders her to admit she's a creep, promising to reward her if she complies. After letting her inner Jeffrey Epstein lose, Hannah still tries to act tough, so Kure decides to use her R-rated torture technique to get her to confess. During this time, after Mafuyu and the group finish up their shopping spree, she starts yapping about bargaining like a parrot, and as she attempts to playfully whack Tomo on the head for teasing her, Alexander almost cuts her in pieces, commenting that he won't let any harm come to his main squeeze. This makes Mafuyu lash out at him, and soon after a man approaches them, introducing himself as a volunteer who is looking for missing girls. After a brief chat with him, Tomo leads the group to a lingerie store to hit some jug holders while Teresa wants to get a strap that'll make her bouncy castles easily accessible to Alexander. Just then, the store attendant drags the girls to try some undies on, and Alexander sneaks in with them, wanting to feed his eyes. However, Mafuya becomes a party pooper, dragging him out to wait for the girls with her. While Tomo explores Teresa's body like Dora, the attendant ruins their alone time and suddenly pulls out a taser, putting the girls to sleep. Later on, when Mafuyu and Alexander return to get them, the attendant tells them they left already, and Mafuyu gets worried, considering the increase in kidnappings. However, Alexander becomes Sherlock Holmes, disarming the attendant, and then finds the secret passage leading to the girls. Meanwhile, the kidnappers start creating adult content of the girls, making them produce baby-making sounds for the gram. But before they can hop into the main event, Alexander cuts the show short, wiping them out. Afterward, he scolds Teresa for letting her guard down, while Mafuyu joins them, rushing to check on Tomo, feeling glad that she's safe. Suddenly, Kurei appears out of nowhere with her blow-up doll and launches successive attacks on them, but they evade them. Seeing he is low on Soma, Mafuya thinks he'll come after her headlights, but Alexander says her melons are too small for him Emotional, damn it! and calls for Teresa instead. While he gets some of her low-fat milk, Kure attacks him, but he easily wards off the attack and charges at her. However, she captures him and deals a lot of damage on him. But before she can finish him off, Mafuyo gets her wet, preventing her from using her lighting bolt moves. Teresa then states that Kure is going overboard just to test Alexander, so she lets go of him and mocks him before becoming airborne. After this, the group wonders if they're on their side, but Teresa states that the chances are slim, while Alexander becomes ashamed that he got his whooped. Later that night, when Hannah arrives at her house, she is shocked to meet Kare there, who says she'll be living with her, and although Hannah protests, Kare grabs her reset button. She then uses reverse psychology on her, checkmating her into agreeing to stay together, after which she lets Hannah kiss her downstairs lips as a reward. The following day at school, as the class makes fun of Midorai, Mafuyo tries defending her however, Miuri immediately starts talking trash about her. Hearing this, Alexander expresses his disgust at her rotten attitude which shuts her up. Meanwhile, back at the house, Hannah is having the time of her life at her house, being treated like a cow, while Kray thinks of ways to play with her. During this time, the girls decide to have a picnic with Alexander after school, and he complains like a spoiled brat when he sees the whack food Mafuya prepared. However, after taking a bite from it, he is surprised that it tastes good and compliments her, raising her up. After this, they head to the church, and Mafuya heads to the bathroom to flick her bean. Huh? only to find Teresa finishing up her pleasure session, which shocks her. Suddenly, the peeping Tom shows up behind them and scolds Teresa for not being on guard while taking her dump. While Teresa heads out, Mafuyu realizes she doesn't really know much about Teresa, so she asks Alexander about her, who replies that he doesn't give a damn about her past as long as she keeps clapping him, which stuns the girls. Just then, the priest approaches them and starts giving them a lecture on the chronicles of Teresa, revealing that she is an orphan from a small European country. He mentions that a few years ago, after losing her family, she lived at an orphanage with a bunch of nuns whom she considered family. But after a while, they were attacked by a member of the psycho group, and she watched as the hoodlums played with them before sending them to heaven, making her a prime candidate for therapy. He concludes by stating that she came to the school after what happened to her to protect the girls from the adepts. After hearing this, the girls meet with Teresa to learn more about her, however, they perceive a strange smell and realize that Teresa is trembling in fear. Suddenly, Tomo is nabbed by a lunatic version of Kabuto, which 
which triggers Alexander's spidey senses. As Mafuyu lays down a plan of attack, she sees that Teresa is having an episode of PTSD, while the creep decides to go to second base with Tomo, revealing her huge mommy mokers. Seeing this, Teresa gets the courage to rush to Tomo's aid, but gets caught by the creep instead, so Mafuyu tosses a bag at him as a distraction while freeing the girls from his grip. Even when her knees are about to give up on her, she promises to protect them, and Alexander soon shows up, immediately identifying the creep as one of the adepts known as the Gas Chamber. Seeing that she is still shaken up by what happened, Alexander talks some sense into her, after which she gets a grip of herself and then treats him like a nursing toddler to give him a power boost. Just then, Chamber charges at Alexander, and even when he stands his ground for a while, he soon gets pushed to the wall by Chamber. While he thinks it's the end for him, Teresa and Mafuyu provide backup for him, dealing huge damage to him while Alexander splits him like a sandwich. Later that evening, Teresa arrives at the house, stating that she is moving in with them to fulfill her duties to Alexander properly. And while Mafuyu is concerned that she's going to be constantly milked by Alexander, Tomo is excited to have extra company. The following morning, as the girls prepare to head to school, they find that Teresa is role-playing as the maid of the house, and while the girls appreciate her efforts, Asumdir says she's taking up space in the house, which triggers Mafuyu, but he later compliments her cooking, which makes Teresa glad. After this, Mafuyu heads to the church to meet with the priest complaining about the constant attacks by members of the adepts, and she asks if he has an idea of where the icon is. Unfortunately, he has no idea of its location, but he tells her Alexander will keep on wiping out their attackers, and assures her that the Athos religion is on her side. After this, she heads to her uncle's office in search of the icon, and later meets with Miyuri to plead for access to her family's villa so she can search for it properly. Although she initially refuses, Kurei asks her to hand her the keys, giving her puppy eyes, which makes Miyuri fold like a flip phone. In exchange for hearing her out, Miyuri makes the girls work as maids, even forcing Alexander to become a drag queen which pisses him off. Although he stands against being humiliated, Mafuyo begs him to go along with it so she can get what she wants. Soon after, Kurei joins them, while Tomo heads to the bathroom, only only to find Hannah being treated like a masochist there. Meanwhile, as Kuri gossips about Miyuri with Mafuyo, she reveals that she's only treated kindly by Miyuri because of her Barbie doll looks, and when she meets with Miyuri, she starts bragging about a very expensive egg she owns and refuses to sell to a shady company, who has been pressuring her to sell it to them. Suddenly, they get surrounded by heavily armed mercenaries from the company, and before Alexander can react, he's given a painful version of a sedative. After capturing the group, they discover that the egg thereafter isn't displayed there, and instead of retreating, the leader threatens to make an adult movie star, so he can blackmail her family into handing over the eggs. They'd first start the R-rated shoot with Alexander, and the girls take some mental damage when he doesn't back off knowing he is a guy. As a huge creep is about to pounce on Kurei, Miri jumps in to save her even when she's terrified, and says she's willing to become a Ho to protect them, which stuns Kurei. After hearing this, she is given the chance to go through with her promise by becoming a strip club worker for the creeps, however, before she reveals the main goods. Kurei states that she'll join the show to save her. After thanking Miri, for her attempt at saving them, she gets some soma from her milk bags, making her go into the avatar state of pleasure and pass out from it. Soon after, Anna provides her blow-up doll for her, which she uses to turn the mob into chunks of meat. However, the leader of the crew blocks her attack and starts spraying her with bullets that she easily blocks. Eventually, she captures him, and before she can finish him off, he mentions that he was attacked by the sodium quasar, which catches Alexander's attention. As he tries getting more info from him, he becomes atomic. However, Alexander protects the group from any damage. And when Miri wakes up, she starts freaking out as she sees her treasures in ruins. The following day, since Mafuyu has finally gotten the key to the villa where she thinks her uncle hid the icon, she hops on a train heading there and Mayuri decides to tag along, making Mafuyu uncomfortable as she tries looking after her. Later on, while walking through the mountains, Mayuri keeps complaining about the bad conditions, and later becomes less of a jerk to Mafuyu, asking what was so important as she left Tomo to find. Before Mafuyu can reply, Mayuri is taken captive by three baldies, who introduce themselves as three brothers of Helium, as they can properly check if Mayuri's chest melons are real. She frees herself as Mafuyu wards off their attacks, telling her to make a run for it. After Mayuri bolts, the Helium brothers corner Mafuyu, causing her to fall down a hill and pass out. They then decide to take advantage of her, but one of them suddenly becomes a human bonfire, while the rest ditch him. Meanwhile, as Kurei does BDSM stuff to Hannah of the house, the group interrupts 
interrupts her fun time, asking her about Mafuya's whereabouts, and in response, she says she'll talk if Alexander kisses her feet, which he hesitantly does. During this time, Mafuya wakes up to find a pipsqueak staring at her small melons, causing her to freak out, and soon after, a mysterious dude walks in who the boy says saved her from the Helium brothers. He then introduces himself as Otori and the pipsqueak as Lizzie, and after, they both head out for training. Later on, after Lizzie's training session, she heads to the riverside with Mafuyu to get some water, and Lizzie suggests they swim together. But Mafuyu turns her down, thinking she's a guy. To prove she's a girl, Lizzie shows Mafuyu her special places, which stuns her, and they proceed to explore their bodies while having a bath. Afterward, as the two get to know each other, Lizzie explains how Utori adopted her and Mafuyu opens up to Lizzie, revealing that she's headed to her uncle's villa in search of something important. Later on, while Mafuyu heads back to get started on dinner, the two remaining baldies show up, revealing their plan to find the icon and immediately attack Lizzie. As they fight, Miyuru walks in on them, and Lizzie decides to get a power boost from her huge racks, after which she uses her bankai to easily erase them. The following day after saying her goodbyes to Otori and Lizzie, Mafuyu heads back on the road and meets Tomo and the group at her destination. When they head into the villa, they find a painting there which they figure is the icon, however, they find that it's a painting of the girls, making the Mafuya break down in tears as she realizes how much her uncle loves them. After this, the group decides to head back home, and they run into Miyuri as they are about to head out, who looks like a rabid raccoon. The following day at school, Mafuyu is very shocked when Utori introduces himself as the class new history teacher, and while teaching stares at Alexander in a sus way. After class, Tons of chicks surround him like he's an imprinted mother hen. Shooting their shots at him, however, he turns his attention to Mafuyu, stating that fate must have brought them together again, and she decides to invite him over for dinner. Later that night, while they prepare to receive him, Tomo commends Mafuyu for having the courage to make a move on Mutori, and soon after, the gang arrives for dinner. As they have their seats, Lizzie's culture instincts make her massage Tomo's chest balloons, amazed that it isn't silicon, while Utori hits it off with Mafuyu, which makes Alexander jealous. Just then, Miyuri pops up out of nowhere, alongside Mitarai, to crash the party as she feels that Mafuyu set up the private welcome party to become Utori's favorite student. While she's rambling on, she instantly becomes brain dead when she sees Lizzie, still thinking she's a guy and Tomo then gets her to go out of character, making her admit that she just wants to hang out with them. After this, Lizzie decides to take a bath with Tomo and Miyuri, which makes Miyuri very nervous, however, she is shocked to find that Lizzie doesn't have a PP. Seeing this, Miyuri states that she mistook Lizzie for a guy as she handled her melons like a down bad teenager nature when they first met, but Lizzie doesn't seem to remember what happened, which damages Mayuri's pride. They then proceed to have a moment together, leaving Midorari alone like that quiet kid at school. During this time, Teresa meets Hana, alongside the anime version of the Power Puff Girls, beating the crap out of some hoodlums, and soon after she witnesses a member of the lunatic gang kidnap her. The following day, the girls head to school alongside Lizzie, who is still adjusting to dressing as a girl, and on their way, Alexander gets pissed at her when she calls him a two-inch warrior, but she ignores him even when he threatens to thrash her. When they arrive at school, he meets a letter in his locker, which he decides to sure it, thinking it's a love letter, but Mafuyu stops him, stating that he should consider the feelings of the sender. Hearing this, he decides to take a look at the letter instead and makes up his mind to meet with the sender, which stuns Mafuyu. Meanwhile, as the creep recreates Fifty Shades of Grey with Hannah, Kurei suddenly pops up to retrieve her, and she gets the shock of a lifetime when her attacks are easily deflected by him, making her realize he's the Quasar of Oxygen. Seeing Hannah in a tough spot, Kurei decides to go all in to save her, but she takes a huge hit instead, and the oxygen quasar then surrounds her with a wall of fire. Suddenly, Hana rushes to meet Kurei, and unexpectedly, Teresa shows up, causing a distraction for the girls to escape, but she is knocked out by the oxygen quasar. During this time, Alexander waits on his secret admirer while the girls spy on him, and they are shot when the green-haired baddie shows up. Just then, she starts crying, then runs to hug him, begging him to defeat her brother. In the meantime, the Oxygen Quasar has an extreme adult session with Teresa, telling her to submit to him. However, she remains Alexander's loyal bimbo, which pisses him off. After witnessing a hot chick hump Alexander, while preparing dinner that night at the house, Tomo notices that Mefuya's mood has gone sour from being jealous, and soon after, the cause of her Sundar mood shows up. Just then, the hot bimbo follows soon after, introducing herself to the girls as Aoi. And while they have dinner, Mefuya reveals that she's surprised Alexander brought home the chick, however, he stops Aoi from revealing why she met with him, telling Mafuyu to buzz off. This triggers her, and to make things worse, he tells her to go snuggle with Otori since she's into him, which makes her mad 
visit him. As she calls him a big baby, Alexander becomes annoyed and tells Elway to sleep with him, which gets on her last nerve, causing her to lash out at him out of jealousy. Just then, Hannah shows up carrying Kurei who is severely injured, and later on, while they tend to her wounds, Oi attempts to head out, but Alexander stops her, assuring her he'll handle everything. Seeing him so close to her, Mafuya becomes jealous, and while Kuri tells Alexander what happened to her, Oi tells the girls that she asked him to defeat her brother. She proceeds to narrate how they grew up under the adepts and the harsh training they, alongside other kidnapped children, went through to harness their quasar powers, stating that her brother was once part of the good guys trying to protect her. But he turned into a psycho immediately, he got his quasar abilities. While they talk, Mafuya notes that she is injured and decides to treat her wounds, and while doing so, Oi asks Mafuyu if she wants to clap Alexander, making her flustered. Just then, she attacks Mafuyu, revealing her alter ego, and Alexander immediately rushes in to save her, then chases after the psycho. Later on, he meets Teresa tied up like a piece of meat in the slaughterhouse, and as he saves her, Yu shows up from the shadows, trying to put on a strip show for Alexander, but the girls show up to ruin the show. Alexander then asks where Oi is, so he explains that he shares a body with his sister, and he is currently in charge of her body at the moment, revealing that the adepts sent him after the icon. After stating this, he immediately throws a bunch of raising guns at Alexander, but he blocks all of them. To distract him, Yu attacks the girls, while Alexander defends them, causing the warehouse to come crashing down, and in an attempt to save Mafuyo, Alexander ends up falling in a pit with her. Meanwhile, Kurei wakes up and decides to gain some energy from sucking Soma from Hannah, and afterward heads out to meet the others. During this time, Mafuyo wakes up to meet Alexander unconscious and weak, so she preps herself to give him some Soma. Meanwhile, Yu looks all over for them, but he gets stalled as Elwood tries taking over the body. Seeing that Alexander is unconscious, Afuya channels her inner Bill Cosby, sticking her chest pimples in his mouth to feed him Soma. When he wakes up, she goes into Sundar mode, scolding him for passing out during a fight and denying that she fed him Soma. Soon after, Yu shows up, and Alexander tries talking some sense into him but fails. Just then, Yu picks up the fight from where they left off, and although he seems to be overpowering Alexander, he is surprised when he pulls out his ultimate Zampakudo, which is resistant to his powers. Before he can end him, Matthew steps in, thinking she can have a therapy session with Yu to let Elwe have her body back even when Alexander warns against it. As their guards are down, Yu takes Mafuyu hostage. However, Kurei suddenly shows up and saves her, giving Alexander an opening to finish Yu off. After defeating Yu, Alexander becomes sad as Elwe reminds him of his previous waifu, and Mafuyu tries consoling him by cuddling him. Later that night, while the girls get set for bed, Mafuya's headlights seem bigger than usual as they can't fit into her rack holders, so Tomo decides to confirm her suspicion by giving them a thorough massage and later on, she takes a moment to enjoy its softness before making a mold of them to check her cup size. The next day at school, Miri meets with the girls to give them the tea about Midorai escaping a flasher and goes on rambling about hating cultured men, then strong arms them into volunteering to patrol the neighborhood at night. Later at night, while they prepare to head out to patrol, Mafuya becomes mad that Miyuri always boss them around and Alexander, alongside Teresa, all volunteered to tag along with her to patrol. Tomo also asks to come along, but Mafuyu turns her down, which makes her sad. After they head out, Tomo remains depressed for a while however, she makes up her mind to find a way to help out, and she almost burns the house down while making dinner. Just then, a random dude rushes on to put out the fire and scolds her for wasting good food. Seeing her struggling to make a simple dish, he gets frustrated and takes over the cooking. After making dinner, he gets sidetracked into talking about his brothers with Tomo, and suddenly recalls why he invaded the house in the first place. After making an attempt to intimidate her, he realizes she is the person he's looking for and begins talking like a crackhead, stating that Tomo now belongs to him. Meanwhile, as the others patrol the woods, Alexander senses a quasar nearby, so he signals Teresa to give him her fluids to power up, and Mafuyo gets jealous seeing him suck her like an orange. Back at the house, to make Tomo scared, Joshua ties her up and threatens to clap her, but she doesn't react as he expected, so he decides to rip her clothes from her slowly to make her feel embarrassed, and he is amazed by her huge milk jugs. Seeing that she doesn't seem to be ashamed, he proceeds to release her puppies, and he goes into cloud nine as he witnesses her amazing jiggle physics. Even after this, she still isn't scared of him, which frustrates him, so he decides to develop plot with her as a last-ditch effort. But the virgin is too much of a wuss to go through with it, so he tells her to cover up. As he cleans up, she becomes Dr. Phil, stating that he must hate his job and ends up triggering his PTSD, making him remember why he must steal the icon from them to prove that he is not a useless quasar, so he can be added to the top-ranking adepts. Hearing this, Como becomes terrified and tells him she'll never forgive him if he hurts Alexander or Mafuyo, stating that he should just 
eliminate her as she doesn't want to be a burden to them anymore, which shocks Joshua. This seems to hit his soft spot as he begins yelling at her, telling her not to give up on life, as it'll only sadden the people who love her, then warns her not to ask to be sent to heaven. Seeing how sad he is, she advises him to abandon his hunt for the icon and to go live peacefully with his siblings, which immediately lightens up his mood. As she heads to set the table for dinner, he drools over her huge buns and starts fantasizing about clapping her, which turns him on. Before he can jump her, Mafuyu suddenly shows up and alerts the others, causing Joshua to bolt. As they're about to chase him, Tomo stops them, and later in the bath with Mafuyu, she explains that he has people that he wants to protect too, assuring her he won't do anything bad. Hearing this, Magyu decides to drop his case, which makes Tomo happy. Some days later, an innocent-looking pair of twins continuously cause trouble for a policewoman, and as she tells them off, they whip out the bag of adult toys, begging her to punish and touch them however she pleases, which creeps her out. As she turns them down, they get upset, so they decide to punish her instead, ending her with over the top pleasure, and using her blood as graffiti paint. Back in the house, while the group prepares for school, Mafuyu stops Tomo from following them as she fell ill from exposing her special places. And later in class, as Mafuyu arrives, Hana suddenly starts bullying her, and Miyuri immediately joins in, stating that she's the class maid. When she tries to talk back to them, Miyuri shuts her up, stating that she's lucky to be in the school after what her uncle did. Seeing that no one is stepping in, Midorai attempts to stand up for her, but Miyuri threatens to make her life miserable if she doesn't pipe down. However, as they are about to start a UFC match, Alexander steps in, scaring off Mayuri and Hannah, which makes Midorai relieved. Later on, as Mafuyu walks through the hallways with Midorai, she asks Mafuyu to thank Alexander for saving her, and becomes nervous when Mafuyu tells her to do so in person. Seeing this, Mafuyu agrees to help her out, and while Midorai daydreams about Alexander, Mafuyu snaps her back to reality. After this, while Midorai takes out the trash, the creepy twins approach her and ask to meet with Alexander, so she offers to lead them to him. However, she asks to use the bathroom before doing so, and the girls begin stripping her, which creeps her out. As they ask her to punish them, Alexander, alongside Teresa, shows up, and the girls reveal their identities, stating that their mother ordered them to find him so he can punish them. He then tells Midorai to stay away, but before she can run, they warn her not to move as they'll have to punish her if she runs off. Then they go full-on Alabama mode and suddenly attacks Midorai, but Alexander saves her in time, sticking his poles in one of the twins, which makes her produce happy sounds stating that her fluids are gushing out of her. He then realizes they're the Quasar of Mercury and immediately launches an attack on them. However, Q snatches his pull from him, commending that it's too big for her to handle while going to town on it. Just then, they pull out their bag of adult toys, asking him to go ham on them with the tools, and before they can end him, Kare shows up in time to save them, calling the twins novice mesochists to taunt them. Meanwhile, when Midorai arrives at the class to get help, she meets a blonde bimbo who says she's substituting as their history teacher and approaches Mafuyo, stating that she'd like to interrogate her. When Miri tries standing up to her, she sends her flying and goes on a rampage, which makes the class panic. During this time, as Kare holds back Q and R, she lures them into attacking her and fries them, knocking them out. However, the girls get back on their feet, explaining that they'll continuously regenerate until they fuse with their mother, which makes the girls frightened. Back in the class, Eva holds a class on masochist one-on-one -on -one with students, using Midorai as a visual aid, stripping and sucking her near-flat chesticles. Seeing how terrified Midorai is, Mafuyu steps in to protect her, so Eva decides to attack her instead. However, Midorai lands a blow on her, which triggers her. As Mitari sees her life flash before her eyes, Alexander shows up in time to save her, commending the girls for holding back Eva, then prepares to send Eva to the underworld. He then calls up Midorai and drinks her chest pimple juice to get a power boost. After this, he proceeds to whoop Eva's b and as she tries to escape, Teresa intercepts her. She then gives him an opening to deal major damage to Eva and sets her ablaze to finish her off, which amazes everyone. Later on, the police show up at the school, cooking up a story to cover up what is really happening. And later on, while Mafuyo confronts the father about lying to the students, some of her classmates show up to apologize for not helping out earlier. Although she is cool with it, Alexander scolds them for it, but Midori I defends them, stating that they were too frightened to do anything. Afterward, she thanks him for saving her, and he praises her for bravery, making Mafuya pout. As Alexander recalls his horrible past, Kare shows up and teases him to get his mind off things, then informs him that the twins escaped. However, she assures him they're harmless since their master isn't around. Later that night, while the girls hang out with Alexander, Tomo feels relieved that no one got hurt during the incident, while Alexander scolds Mafuya for putting herself in danger, and when she feels guilty for putting the class in danger, he assures her he'll keep 
keep everyone safe, which makes Tomo treat him like a good dog. The following day, when the group arrives at school, a whole class stares intensely at Alexander as he takes his seat and suddenly turns into the paparazzi, which makes Mafuyo glad as they're no longer scared to approach him. Just then, Hannah becomes the party pooper as she states that he is putting the class in danger by being around, however, Mitarai comes to his defense, assuring that he'll protect everyone. When she tries shutting her up, Mitarai stands her ground, which surprises Hana, and she then asks Alexander to be friends with everyone. Suddenly, Miyuri shows up and starts acting all buddy-buddy with him, prompting the whole class to surround him. Wanting to talk with him, however, the introvert is too shy to stay around them and walks off with a grin. Later on, while checking Tomo's melon size at the nurse's office, Mafuyu expresses her joy over Alexander's newfound friendships. Although she's worried he won't know how to interact properly, however, the nurse assures her he'll be fine. The next day at school, Alexander finds a bunch of love letters in his locker, and while in class, a bunch of chicks rally around him like doves. Later that evening, while Mafuyu heads home from grocery shopping, feeling excited about making dinner for the group, she bumps into Eva and gets kidnapped by her. Meanwhile, as Yomo and Alexander wait for her at the house, Tomo notices that he is fatigued from pulling too many chicks at school, so she tells him to suck her melons to blow off some steam, but he turns her down. When she asks if he wants to clap Mafuyu, his face turns as red as a tomato, and while they talk, Teresa suddenly shows up, informing them that Magyu has been kidnapped. They immediately head to her location, where they meet Eva there who immediately attacks him and easily blocks his counterattacks, which stuns him, as he signals Teresa to join in, as threatens to slice Mafuyu's throat if they attack, while Eva captures and deals major damage to them, then proceeds to touch Mefuyu's special places to annoy him. Just then, Kurei shows up, interrupting the show, and soon manages to free Mafuyu, who immediately rushes over to check on Alexander. When he apologizes for being too weak to protect her, calling his feelings for them a weakness, she tells him it's his strength instead and proceeds to stick her milk cannons in his mouth to boost his strength. After tasting her nectar, he goes into beast mode and charges at Evo, while Kurei provides support for him. After splitting Eva in half like a sandwich, he suddenly collapses from losing so much blood and Mafuyu rushes to check on him. The following day at a public bath, Mafuyu realizes that her headlights have increased in size, and the girls tease Midorai for having little melons, while Tomo grabs her to airdrop some chest fat to her. Meanwhile, as Hana baits Kure, she almost loses her mind, trying to hold back her urges and Kure mocks her acting like a cultured creep. Seeing the girls touch themselves, Alexander gets nervous, and while the down bad nurse tries stripping him, Teresa then reveals that his personality got messed up from the shock of losing too much blood in his last battle. However, she feels relieved that he survived the battle, and Mefuyu mocks him for talking big about protecting everyone. When Tomo mocks her for being overly worried about him, she becomes flustered, while Kurei is surprised that her story about Alexander being a girl stuck with him. However, the girls take his delusion as an advantage, since their accommodation cost on their trip is cheaper. During this time, the cultured nurse tries to clap Alexander, which triggers Mafuyu, and as she tries stopping her, the nurse teases her by making sus comments about Alexander's pull, causing her to get flustered. Later during dinner, Alexander gets pampered as they serve him a meal that's rich in iron, so he can heal properly, and hearing everyone give so much attention to him triggers Hannah, who causes a scene by flashing everyone. Later on, Midorai assures Alexander he'll regain his memories soon, however, her good deed backfires as he roasts her for having a flat chest, causing her to have a mental breakdown. While Mafuyu scolds Alexander, Tomo tries humping her as she got drunk from smelling the nurse's beer, and she begins making out with Mafuyu, causing Alexander to freak out. After this, as Kurei has some fun with Hannah, they are interrupted by Jiga Chad Nun, who barges into the girl's room with Han and Kurei, tied up in a 69 position, surprising the girls. Just then, Teresa shows up and kneels before her, stating that she has been waiting for her. Nikuma then orders the girls to head to the bath for inspection, and Teresa introduces her to the girls. When they arrive at the bath, Nikuma takes her time in massaging and analyzing all their melons. After this, she reveals that she was set there to cure Alexander, then orders him to suck everyone's milk jugs to regain his memories, which makes him panic, and the girls encourage him to do so. While they surround him, he becomes overwhelmed by the sight of so many naked chicks, which makes him panic and lose control of his powers, leading to an earthquake. As they they try to calm him down, their jiggle physics makes things worse as he ends up blowing up the spring. This only makes him develop a fear of fun bags without curing his amnesia. A few days later, Alexander is attacked by a bunch of creeps who attempt to run a train on him. However, a hot maid shows up, calling herself Lilikaman, and the men decide to use her for foreplay before focusing on Alexander. This, however, triggers her, and she proceeds to blast them with her knocker rays, ripping her clothes to expose her massive chest. After he thanks her for saving him, she becomes a frog while Alexander stares in amazement. Some days later, to help cure his fear of fun bags, Tomo puts on a puppet show for Alexander using her hooters, and Mefuyu freaks out when she walks in on them. While Tomo tries explaining to her, Teresa joins them, stating that Alexander has overcome his fear 
of melons because Lilikaman saved him and he asks them how he can shoot beams from his chest, confusing the girls. A few days later, while Lilikaman is being praised for taking out a bunch of robbers, she heads to a nearby building to switch her identity like Hannah Montana, and while she's proud of the hero she's becoming, a degenerate version of Catwoman shows up, asking Maiduri to become the Robin to her Batman. When she agrees to team up with her, Hannah calls in Kurei as her master to train Miyuri, when in reality, Kurei intends to use the training as a cover-up to take back an important artifact that is in Miyuri's possession. To start the training, Kurei summons her blow-up doll and proceeds to whip the girls. Then she puts them through the labors of Hercules. At the end of the day, she commends Miyuri for enduring the training, and she thanks Kurei for training her, looking like a train wreck. The following day, a commercial plane loses control, and while everyone fears that it'll crash land, Miyuri shows up to save the day. After this, while she walks through the crowd like a pop star, Alexander forces her way through the crowd to meet her, asking to be her apprentice and Miyuri agrees to take her in, which excites Alexander. A few days later, while Alexander lies powerless beside Tomo and Mafuyu, who are worried sick about him, he sadly states that he may not become a true heroine as he was taken down by the attacks of the robots. However, Miyuri shows up, praising him for having the guts to fight against evil, claiming that his courage makes him a true heroine, making him glad. He then passes out with a smile, and while the girls are in tears, Hannah suddenly shows up, telling Miyuri to get ready to fight against her, which shocks Mayuri, who refuses to do so. Even after hearing this, Hana immediately attacks her, treating her like a cannonball, and this triggers Miyuri, who goes Super Saiyan. After the two clash, Miyuri ends up defeating Hana, and she praises Miyuri's power, then directs her to a nearby tower claiming that an opponent she must defeat is waiting for her at the top of it. After Miyuti accepts Hannah's request, she heads to the top of the tower where she meets Kurei as the final boss, and soon after, Kurei notices that the power she took is fading away, so she decides not to fight her anymore, but Miyuri, still caught up in the hero act, refuses to back down. Even as Kurei tries explaining things to her, Miyuri uses her Kanonamea to make her part of the constellation of stars and immediately passes out. She later wakes up to find herself tied up in a magic circle, and a sketchy-looking dude suddenly starts tickling her chest buttons with some lube, claiming it's a purifying ritual for her. After he makes her reach the peak of excitement, the circuit completely clears from her system, and the creep decides to have some fun with her. Before he can jump her, Hana interrupts them, while a hot bimbo suddenly uses the dude as a punching bag, calling him a cultured freak, then drags him away, leaving Hana confused. Some days later at the house, Mafuyu walks in on Alexander using Tomo as a body pillow, and as she feels sad that he lost his memories. He suddenly goes to second base with her, asking her to read a bedtime story for him using her average-sized melons, which she shoves him into. After this, Tomo becomes a massage therapist as Mafuyu is stressed out from reading a ton of stories to Alexander, and while Teresa hopes he is cured soon, the priest advises them to stay hopeful, mentioning that it will be a bad time for the adept to attack. Later that night, as Mafuyu checks on Alexander, she finds his room empty. Meanwhile, he is wandering the streets, feeling paranoid that everyone is staring at him like a crazy person. While running off, he makes a hot chick bend over for him as he runs into her, and she immediately falls for him when she sees how cute he is. However, when she tries taking him back to her place, Lizzie shows up to save him, holding him like a Disney princess, and this overloads the chick's brain. She then apologizes for what she did, asking them for a favor and later leads them to a nearby cafe, where she dresses Lizzie as Prince Charming, while Alexander Alexander is dressed as a lawly hottie, which drives the cafe workers nuts. They continue feeding their fantasies by making him try out kinky costumes, and in the meantime, the girls run around town looking for him. Later on, while they hang out, Alexander feels as though he's forgetting something important, and as he goes into a moody state, Lizzie gets drunk off the carbonated drinks, causing a scene as she yells that she wants to be treated like an adult. Since she wants to be an adult so badly, the chick takes them back to her place to introduce plot development to them. But when the girls strip, Alexander has performance issues, and tries to chicken out. As she is about to end his virginity streak, they get interrupted by a low-budget dead shot, and they take cover as he turns the room into a shooting wrong game. To get Soma, Lizzie starts sucking Nashini's milk jugs, making her pass out from the stimulation, then pulls out her sword to block the attacks. Just then, Alexander realizes that her defense won't hold up, and while he thinks of a way to help her, she is suddenly knocked down. Before the hitman can finish her off, Alexander steps in to save her as he regains his memories, and he is surprised that he's in a bunny girl outfit. As the lead quasar fires more bullets at them, Alexander easily blocks them and Yuno reverses his attacks, then pins the hitman to the wall like modern art. After this, Lizzie immediately attacks him as she seems to have a vendetta against him, while he turns into the Grim Reaper, and while the two are about to clash, Mafuyu walks in on them, surprised that they're about to fight. Seeing this, she steps to the middle to stop them from ending each other. And while they're distracted, 
the Lee Kwaiser attempts firing his last shot at them. But before he can do so, Utori turns him to a burnt offering. Just then, Alexander realizes he is the Kwaiser he's after, and Teresa suddenly shows up behind Utori while he's holding Tomo, which pisses Alexander off. Later on, after Utori takes Tomo to his lair, Lizzie meets with him, asking him to spare the girls as they are his friends. But he turns her down, telling her to follow his orders. Just then he recalls when he first met her while he was raising a church of Athos and how he raised her, which made him realize that he really cares for her. Meanwhile at the church, while Mafuyu is worried about Tomo, Alexander yells at the priest for not telling him Otori's true identity. Even when he knew he was after Tomo, however, Kurei states that there's nothing that could have been done to Otori, because he is one of the strongest members of the Adepts who manipulates the sodium in humans to turn them into roast beef. She further reveals that he has forsaken the Adept, but as Mafuyu thinks they can win him over to their side, the priest crushes her hopes, stating that he went on a rampage, stealing some valuable artifacts to further his personal scheme. When Alexander suggests fighting him head-on, the priest tells him to sit back as Utori is way stronger than him and states that Athos headquarters will send someone to fight in his stead, which triggers Alexander. When Tomo asks what'll happen to Tomo in the meantime, the priest replies that he doesn't give a damn about her, and this causes Alexander to angrily run off. Later on, when Mafuya goes to check on him, he tells her his reasons for going after members of the Adepts, and just then, Hana calls her, revealing Utori's location to her. Hearing this, Alexander immediately heads out to meet them, however, Mafuyu stands in his way, asking to join him since Otori is too strong for him to handle alone. When he refuses her request, she starts making her clothes disappear, asking him to suck her juicy soma to change his mind, and the virgin gives in to his urge to develop plot with her. After emptying his balls in her, she praises him for showing her a good time, making him blush, but the idiot says Tomo's knockers feel better, ruining the mood. When the two arrive at their destination, Utori immediately senses their presence and orders Lizzie to eliminate them, guilt-tripping her into happily conveying his orders. Shortly after meeting them, Lizzie pulls out her sword and attacks them. Meanwhile, Ottery battles with a member of the Adepts and blows up the building. Seeing this, Mafuya rushes towards the building as she's worried about Tomo, and Lizzie stops Alexander from going after her, stating that he'll have to step over her dead body to reach Utori, which makes Alexander mock her for being Utori's dog. After a while, Alexander eventually trashes her, and as he is about to send her to the afterlife, Teresa begs him to spare her. However, he charges at both of them. Meanwhile, as Mafuyu talks with Otori, he reveals his plan to end Tomo with the artifacts he gathered, stating that it's her uncle's wish to do so. But before he can tell her his reasons, Tomo lets her alter ego lose, which stuns Mafuyu. While she mocks Otori for dropping out of the adept's high ranks, Mafuyu tries calling out to Tomo, but Furu introduces her as the queen of secrecy called the Quasar of Gold. They then realize that the Gold Quasar has taken over Tomo's body, and just then, she begins exploring her body, which angers Mafuyu. However, when she rushes to attack her, she pretends to be Tomo, which throws Mafuyu off and she gets captured by the Quasar. While she gives her Mafuyu's chest balloons a massage, she concludes that she'll capture her too since she cares so much for Tomo, and then turns her attention towards Atori, mocking his failed attempt to eliminate him before he could possess Tomo. While they talk, Furu reveals their plan for Alexander, stating that they sent adepts after him to prepare him as a sacrifice to fulfill their sex prophecy, which worries Mafuyu. Meanwhile, Alexander couldn't bring himself to Mentoria and she reveals that she agreed to be eliminated by him so he can become stronger. Then she sends him to fight against the villains in the church. Meanwhile, the gold Koiser figures that if Tori is manipulating Alexander to become stronger so he can defeat them and suddenly switches back to Tomo mode as Alexander walks in on them. Immediately, Utori realizes that he didn't wipe out Teresa as he planned and Alexander in his rage tries cutting up Utori, who easily avoids his attacks. After a while, Utori lands a fatal blow on Alexander, weakening him, and Furu expresses his disappointment at Alexander's weakness, as he can't be their sacrifice in that state. Nevertheless, Alexander keeps attacking Utori, but he eventually knocks Alexander down and gives him a pep talk to get him pumped up before sending another attack at him. This scares the girls, however, they're relieved when they see that he is unhurt, and he proceeds to go into the Avatar state which pleases Otori, who decides to go Super Saiyan, sending a huge attack at him. Although everyone thinks he's toast, Alexander charges through the flames and cuts down Otori. Seeing him on 1 HP, Lizzie becomes triggered, but he stops her from attacking Alexander, claiming that he saved him, and asks Liz to forgive him before walking into the light. While she cries over him, Alexander jumps in to save her from being crushed by a boulder, and they watch as he becomes barbecue. Just then the gold quasar takes over Tomo's body and starts talking trash about Otori, which triggers Lizzie. While she blabs on on, he realizes that she is the gold quasar, and she proceeds to suck on Mafuyu's note bags to annoy him. After pressing
chasing Mafuyo like a stress ball, she turns to the artifact so she can absorb it and finish them off. But before she can do so, Kurei steps in, firing copper missiles at her, which ends up destroying the artifact. Alexander then charges at her, but he is easily knocked down as she is way stronger than him, and Lizzie suddenly rushes at her, then frees Mafuyo so she can escape holds onto Tomo, trying to talk some sense into her. To prevent Tomo from taking back her body, Furu opens a portal and drags Tomo into it, leaving the group worried. Meanwhile, as Mitsumi recalls her baby-making sessions with Alexander while meditating, Tasuku ruins her mood by copping a feel of her double Ds, causing her to lash out at him. Later at night, when they return to their temple, their head monk announces that he has seen a vision and makes preparations to send them on a journey. Back at the house, while Mafuyu serves dinners, she tries acting normal, but Alexander and the priest notice that she is worried about Tomo. To make matters worse, he states that even if they save Tomo, the Quasa of Gold still resides in her. But Alexander assures her he'll save Tomo, which makes her mood better. The following day at school, Mafuya brags about Alexander's promise to Hana, and she teases her for talking about him. Just then, their homeroom teacher walks in and introduces Tasuku and Matsumi as transfer students, and Mafuya notices that Alexander is in shock. Later on, Alexander approaches Matsumi, asking why she came to the school, but she avoids the question, asking if Mafuyu is his current hubby. As she is about to put the moves on him, Mafuyu shows up, and as she walks up to them, Matsumi suddenly grabs her knockers, stating that she did a better job satisfying Alexander in the past. As Mafuyu questions, questions how they know each other, Tasuku reveals that she was his first hoe and suddenly asks Mafuyu to take care of his blue balls, which annoys her, and Matsumi, who uses his face as a baseball. While they get into a fight, a blue-haired bimbo suddenly shows up, introducing herself as their council president. As Tasuku tries hitting on her, she crushes his nuts, causing Matsumi to get pissed as it may damage his pleasure pole. However, the red guy seems to give zero and while Matsumi checks on Tasuku, their teacher pops out of nowhere and starts glazing Hiragai. While Matsumi walks off with Tasuku, Alexander tries to figure out her motive for enrolling at the school, and Mafuyu snaps him out of his thoughts, while the teacher stares at them like a cultured creep. Later on, while Hiragi takes a shower, a pair of arms suddenly grabs her, making her produce pleasant soundtracks but before she can finish, she hurries out of the shower. At the same time, Alexander bumps into her, and as he checks to see what's wrong, the hands show up, attempting to knock him out. He then makes her pass out from pleasure as he gets Soma from her to fight the arm, and he is able to eliminate it. Soon after, he tracks down its user, only to find a random dude there, and soon after Tasuku meets him there, stating that he wants some info from Alexander. Seeing him there makes Alexander sus of him, and the two get into a fight. At the same time, Matsumi lures the school nurse out of the infirmary so she can be alone with Mafuyu, and she suddenly knocks Mafuyu out. She later wakes up, only to find herself tied to a bed, while Matsumi whips out her puppies, revealing that she is actually into girls even though she's dating Tasuku. She then begins working on Mafuyo, claiming that she'll teach her nice things, and while showing her all 50 shades of grey, she tries making Mafuyo spill everything she knows about Alexander's power. Before she can take away her V-card, Mafuyo uses her Heiki on her, which also gets the attention of Alexander. During this time, a bunch of scientists analyze Tomo's body to see if she's fit to be a high Moria. However, her huge melons cause some of their equipment to go kaboom, stunning everyone present. When they try reattaching the equipment, Jaka takes over her body, and he is pleased that he is in such a smoking hot body. Meanwhile, after Alexander thrashes Tasuku, he realizes is a human magnet, and while they talk, Tasuku reveals that he traveled from a distant country to fight with him so he can get stronger. But Alexander couldn't care less and bolts in the middle of the conversation. At the same time, Matsumi sees that Mafuyu has developed a cool glowing tattoo, which shows she can summon Alexander's special sword. However, before she can pick up from where she stopped, he shows up to ruin the mood, so she decides to leave them at the moment, while Mafuyo gets worried about the circuit. Later that day, when Toma wakes up in her body, she is surprised to see Jita going to town on her bouncy castles, who states it's for research purposes, but his fun time is ruined when Joshua walks in, causing him to run out shamefully. While they talk, he loses is about half of his blood as he notices she's naked, and after she puts on some clothes, he tells her he can't let her escape as he is a member of the Adepts, but assures her no one will harm her. When he sees how sad she seems, he promises to take good care of her while she's there and gives her some time to herself. The following morning, after she wakes up from a wet dream, she meets a lolly character who is chasing after a dog, and they introduce themselves to each other. While they look for the dog together, Asta asks Tomo why she was captured, but she replies that she doesn't have a clue, then starts yapping about how she wants to get back to Mafuyo, and surprisingly, Asta says she knows a way out of there. She leads her to the top of a high tower, and Tomo sees that they're in the middle of nowhere. But as Asta points towards an escape ship, she almost sleeps with the fishes. After Tomo saves her, she reveals that she really wants to see the outside world, and to cheer her up, Tomo promises to fulfill 
fulfilled her wish, but says they should find her dog first. As Asta goes in for a hug, they both end up falling from the tower, however, Dukin shows up in time to save them from becoming shark food. After this, Asta begs the adepts not to scold Tomo, and Jor blames Joshua, who turns out to be Jida's brother. As he badmouths Joshua, Jida gets triggered, and the two go at each other's neck. Just then, Wong shows up to stop the fight and decides to punish Jida for starting the fight, but Joshua steps in, pleading with them to let her off the hook this time. Even after hearing this, Wong tosses Joshua out of the way and proceeds to attack Jida, but Tomo becomes a human shield, stating that she won't let any harm come to Jida. Seeing this, Asta orders them to stand down, and Tomo is surprised to find out she is a high-ranking adept. Just then, Asta praises Tomo for showing her great kindness and runs into her arms, asking to be besties with her, which makes her happy. Meanwhile, a video of Tomo having fun is sent to Alexander and Mafuyu, and he feels something fishy is going on. Two weeks later, Alexander and Mafuyu still haven't found Tomo, and have even lost contact with her, since she can summon the powerful sword of Moria. Mafuyu asks him to let her fight against the adept, however, he turns her down as she may be too weak to fight with such a powerful weapon. He then tells her to rest up, as they've been working non-stop to find Tomo, and brags about not needing sleep, but he suddenly passes out from fatigue while she heads to school. Later in class, Miyuri announces that she'll be holding a birthday party for Kure at her place, inviting everyone to the event, and Mefuyu is surprised that she got an invite too. Miyuki then tells her to bring Tomo and Sasa to the party too, and reveals that she noticed Mefuyu's gloomy mood. Meanwhile, Alexander suddenly shows up at school to meet with the school nurse, asking why Atho is summoning him and how she's associated with them. In response, she tells him she's useful to him as she knows a lot of stuff that'll help his investigation, and even when he violently presses her chest pillow to interrogate her. She continuously denies being linked to the adepts. To prove she's not with them, she lets him develop plot with her, and after a heated workout session, his post-nut clarity makes him hear her out. She then explains that she's Otori's and Yudi's close friend, and although she doesn't know where he is, she hands him an important book she entrusted to her. Later that night, a ton of people turn up for Kurei's birthday party, bringing a mountain of gifts, and her classmates hand a crown, since she wishes to be a queen while Hannah simps over her like a stalker. Mafuyu then approaches her, stating that it's a perfect gift for her, and although Kurei acts like it's useless, she internally appreciates it. After this, while Miyuri makes a toast, a hairy beast suddenly appears and goes on a rampage causing everyone to panic. Immediately it spots Miyuri's juicy melons, it grabs her and starts draining her. Taking a closer look at it, Miyuri realizes it's Lizzie, and she tosses Miyuri aside, then attacks Mafuyo. Surprisingly, she is able to block it, and Kurei decides to step in, but she ends up getting thrashed, losing her blow-up doll in the process, which devastated her. Before it can send her to the afterlife, Alexander saves her, mocking her for being a weak loser, and easily knocks out the beast. After this, Lizzie returns to her human form, and while Mafuyu wants to know what happened to her, Alexander nonchalantly walks off as he sees that the food is ruined. He then meets with Kurei, who is already in a bad mood and roasts her some more, causing her to lash out at Hannah. While she walks off, she meets their teacher and realizes he was behind the attack. He expresses his disappointment at her loss against the beast, as he expected better from her, and while they talk, she identifies him as a well-known terrorist named Tanner. Just then, he reveals the artifact she's been searching for, inviting her to be their sex imperial princess which stuns her, and while he pleads with her, Jaika suddenly shows up. Meanwhile, Alexander and Mafuyu discover a hidden library in the villa, which contains all the info they've been searching for, and they find out that the icon is in the school's lake. The following day, Alexander and Mafuyu head out to the lake in search of the icon, and Alexander doesn't hesitate to show his bony chest while preparing to dive into the lake, making Mafuyu flustered. When she asks if he'll need an oxygen pack, he replies that he can last longer underwater than in the bedroom, then becomes a submarine. Later on, while while waiting on Alexander, Mafuya falls asleep and dreams that a bunch of tentacles are making her experience new dimensions of pleasure, while also seeing herself emerge from a bright light. Meanwhile, as Alexander searches for the icon, thinking that their info may be wrong, he senses what's happening to Mafuya, so he rushes to meet her and sees her touching herself while calling his name, which makes her embarrassed. During this time, Tomo is busy playing house with Asta, and while they talk, she blabs on about how much she cares about Mafuyu, which makes her a bit sad as she misses her. The following day, while Mafuyu heads out to run some errands, Alexander is curdled up in his room, trying to figure out where the icon is, and later on, he finally walks out to meet the beverages she left for him, alongside a cute note, making his heart skip a beat. On her way to the store, Mafuyu runs into Hannah, and she finds out that Kurei has disappeared. Although she is clearly hurt by this, Hannah pretends as though she doesn't care, and follows in the footsteps 
depths of a flasher, however, Mafuyu doesn't even see this as she suddenly spots Tomo and chases after her. When she finally catches up with her, she finds that it was Tanner all along who suddenly abducts her, while Hana watches from afar. During this time, Matsumi and Tasuku tail some members of the Adepts into a construction site, and after mocking the girls for having flat chests, he gets some soma from Matsumi, then picks a fight with them. Meanwhile, Alexander meets the priest and finds out the conditions for him to get the icon from the lake. Realizing that he actually has all that's required, however, Hana suddenly shows up to tell them what happened. During this time, Mafuyu wakes up to find that she has been sealed in a rock and wangs, orders her to reveal the sword of Morian in her, while the other adepts return from thrashing Matsumi and Tasuku. Back at the school, as the school nurse takes care of their wounds, she assures them that she's on their side, and Tasuku feels frustrated that they lost their fight. Matsumi then apologizes for being careless during the fight, and offers to Susuku a free pass to enter second base with her, but the nurse warns against doing so, telling him to clap her instead. Seeing Tasuku drool over her huge melons annoys Matsumi, and causes her to drag him away. Later that night, when Alexander shows up to save Mafuyo, Tanner invites him to work with their sect, but he turns him down. Before he can attack him, Kurei suddenly shows up and threatens to slice Mafuyo into bits if he moves a muscle. However, Mafuyo attempts to talk some sense into her, but to no avail, and Alexander mocks her for betraying them. Just then, Mafuyo begins to scream as the icon reveals itself, and Mafuyo's knockers suddenly grow bigger than Mars. To annoy Alexander, Kurei begins developing plot with her while he watches and Mafuyo tells him to look away while making happy noises. After a while of receiving time, top-notch tongue work from Kurei, Mafuyu suddenly turns into a milk hose and Tanner explains that she is producing the purest form of Soma, while Alexander gets frustrated that he can only watch. The overstimulation eventually causes Mafuyu to pass out, and Alexander attempts to save her, but Kurei stops him in his tracks. After the icon completely manifests, Tanner explains to Alexander that they'll have to completely drain Mafuyu and toss her away since she contains too much power. Then he teleports away, while Jita holds Alexander back. Just then, Matsumi and Tasuku show up to distract Jita and his sidekick while Alexander chases after Mafuyu. On his way, he gets intercepted by Wong and ends up taking some damage from his attacks. Just then, Lizzie shows up to hold back Wong and Alexander decides to carry on chasing after Mafuyu. Soon after, he meets them before they can enter the sanctuary and engages them however the duo is too strong for him. To make matters worse, Tanner proceeds to get more Soma from Mafuyu, and they both show with her milk, stating that they feel the power entering them while behaving like lunatics. Afterward, he approaches Kurei, telling her to watch as he whoops Alexander's and then treats her like a lollipop which makes her cringe. Just then, Hana kicks him into another time zone and scolds Kurei for letting a degenerate take advantage of her. This makes Tanner mad at Hana, and he suggests that Kurei send her feet under. Although Hana assumes she'll take her side, Kurei suddenly turns against her and summons her blow-up doll, only for her to attack Tanner instead, taking him by surprise. She reveals that she was putting on an act and promises to punish Hana for slapping her earlier. Just then, Jorg attacks Kurei, however, Hannah takes the hit instead, while Tanner frees himself. As he attempts to finish them off, his powers suddenly go out of control and turn him into a blob monster. While he goes on a rampage, everyone gathers to check on Mafuyu, and Alexander becomes depressed, thinking he failed to protect her. Upon seeing this, Teresa gives him a pep talk to get him back on his feet and suggests that they join forces to take down the beast. While he gets Soma from Teresa, Tasuku, and Kurei hold down the beast, and afterward, they are able to take it down. Soon after, Mafuyu wakes up and Alexander is relieved that she's okay. But when they come in contact, the barrier around the sanctuary is lifted. Just then, Jaika shows up, thanking them for taking care of the barrier and summons Olja, which shocks Alexander. After this, she seals a part of the group and heads into the sanctuary, while Alexander and Kuri chase after her. While in the sanctuary, she turns Olja into snowflakes, which triggers Alexander, causing him to summon his blood sword, which completes the conditions needed for the icon to appear. Immediately, the icon pops up, and some freaky tentacles grow out of it. Still pissed off by what happened, Alexander recklessly attacks Jadika and ends up taking serious damage. Kurei then steps in and wraps her like a Christmas gift, however, she easily breaks free and destroys Kurei's doll. She then asks Alexander to come along with her, and when he refuses to play along, she decides to beat him into submission. Although he tries fighting back, she continues toying with him, stating that his anger will make him stronger, while the girls try talking some sense into him. After fighting for a while, she finally knocks him out and talks to them like Omniman talking to Mark, trying to tempt him into going along with her plan. However, he stands his ground and goes on the attack, but she switches her personality to Tomo to throw him off guard and capture him. She then lands a fatal blow on him, stating that she'll create another key. But Alexander decides to feel Tomo's soft chest one last time, and manages to draw out her consciousness by sucking her out. However, Jaika still throws an attack at Tomo, and Alexander takes the hit instead. Upon seeing this, Mafuyo goes on a rampage 
and uses her Heiki to defeat Yaika. Meanwhile, Alexander finds himself in the afterlife with Olja, and although he requests to stay with her, she tells him to head back as the girls are now his reasons to live. While Mafuyu cries over his body, he suddenly comes back to life and takes advantage of the situation by squeezing Mafuyu's new implants, going further to also feel up Tomo's natty melons. After confirming that they're all okay, Mafuyu suggests they head home however, Jaika reappears like a roach that refuses to die and takes over Korea's doll. He then picks a fight with Alexander, but Korea decides to help out. While he attacks him, Alexander takes a sip of each of the girls' soma, and after they all climax in harmony, he uses the combined power to land a fatal blow on Jaika, and he ends up getting sealed in the icon. While Tanner slips away, the crew decides to head back home, feeling relieved that the battle is over. The following day, Mafuyu wakes up from a wet dream about Alexander, only to find that Tomo is milking her, claiming that it's okay since Alexander does it in public. When Mafuyu makes a fuss about it, Tomo teases her by pointing out that she called Alexander's name in her sleep, and he suddenly walks in on them, causing her to lash out at him from shame. Later in school, Midorai feels happy that the girls are present, and Tomo invites Hannah to hang out with them, which stuns her. Looking back at everything they've been through, Mafuyu feels relieved that they can finally get back to living a normal life, and notices that Alexander isn't with them. During this time, as Alexander hangs out with Teresa, feeling depressed that he has to leave town soon, the priest shows up and tells him that Athos has given him a day off, then hands him a photo. Later on, while the girls are in the locker room, Mafuyu notices that her melons have gotten smaller, so she meets with the school nurse, who tells her she's reverting to being flat-chested, which makes her panic. Hearing this, Lizzie barges in, defending the honor of Minnie Melons, which brightens her mood a bit, and after, she decides to check if it's still as soft as it was. Later that night, while they have dinner at the house, Mafuya notices that Alexander's eyes are glued to her chest, making her freak out, and he abruptly walks off feeling flustered. The following day at school, Miyuri approaches Mafuyo, stating that she heard about her chest insecurities, and pulls out an armory of melon-enhancing tools, stating that she wants to use Mafuyu as her test subject. Meanwhile, Kure sees Hannah trying out the products, and she explains to her that she's doing so to produce more soma for her, which makes Kure happy, however, while she punishes her for being a naughty girl. She feels a bit sad as she'll soon leave town. At the same time, the girls go overboard while testing the products and end up causing an explosion. When Alexander rushes in to check on them, Mafuyu feels embarrassed and tells him to buzz off, but before he storms off, he hands her a movie ticket, which the girls take as a date invite. The following day, as they head out for their date, Tomo asks Teresa if she's okay with him clapping Mafuyu, and she replies that she's satisfied with seeing Alexander happy. While strolling through town, Alexander can't hold back his urge to grab her knockers, but she evades all his advances, and afterward, they go on to have a fun time together. At the end of the day, while on their way home, Alexander drops a banger pickup line on her and instantly crushes her soul by stating that he's leaving. He then proceeds to confess to her, stating that his time there is up since his mission has ended, and goes on to have a moment with her mommy milkers to improve his mood, after which she takes his kiss virginity. Before they head back, he hands her his treasure necklace as a sign of his love for her, and she tells him she is also in his heart, even though he's far away. He then promises to return for her one day, telling her to wait for him till then, and she agrees to do so. If you watched up to this point, and you liked the video, let us know by commenting, small melons matter. If you like anime recaps like this, watch this video.